opportunity that every one of us receives from Hashem Barach to have an inner connection with Him is something that on it the verse is saying no one ever saw your achievements, what that you can achieve, except of you. Every person can connect himself to Hashem in a way that no one else ever experienced before. And this is something that's worthy to put an effort every moment of your life for and as much effort as you can to achieve something that will be so unique. For that really the Creator demands from every individual to follow his own heart in a very unique and powerful way that only you can find out what that way is. Because Hashem Barach, He installed inside of us the path from the ancient days already that already been built and been created designed by Him that we will walk in that path and we'll find Him in the end. But with the years and the generations, so darkness came down on those ways and every single one of us must find his own way, the one that fit to Him by the roots of His soul. To understand what that I'm saying, I can ask you to do something. If you will want, you can do it. And if you don't feel like doing it, so it's 100% okay. But I suggest for you to close your eyes for two, three seconds, just to relax and close your eyes. And you don't have to do that if you don't feel comfortable doing that. The Creator, He created every single one of us to reveal His godliness, to reveal His light. When He created the worlds, He created channels that through those channels He will reveal His light. Every single one of us is that kind of a channel. And the light of the Creator, the light of God is flowing from the central point of the creation through us back to the world. And when we're closing our eyes and looking inside, we can see those channels we can see those ways, we can really connect ourselves to our source of being and to experience a little bit from that amazing, amazing light of kindness, of love, of pleasant, of good. Everyone that will close his eyes and will try to observe and to look into his own being, in the beginning he will experience darkness. But after a while, after one minute, after three minutes, for some people it can take an hour, but after a while of just looking into that darkness and trying to recognize some points of light, like that it takes time to get used to the darkness, but after a while you can start seeing things. Everyone that will try to do that 
he will find out a lot, a lot about himself and about the mission that the Creator sent him to keep and to do. Now we can all open our eyes. When the Creator decided to reveal His light through us, He actually decided to cover His own light under our faces and our bodies. The Creator is endless. He is one and only and He is not divided to particles at all. He just made a world that will show a certain vision into the people that are playing roles and parts in that creation. And now we feel that we are individuals, but the truth is that we are all the light of infinity, the light of the ends of Baruch Hu, the Creator Himself. Now when the Creator created us as individuals, so He just literally covered Himself in separated bodies, but because that He is endless, so His unity never finish and never stops between those dividings. And that's why when you see another person, suddenly you feel happiness and joy. And if you see another person that might be your enemy or that you feel some bad feelings from him, so you feel rejection, you feel anger, you can feel fear. How come that person influence on you spiritually in any way, emotionally in any way? If the bodies are really divided, so there is no connection. How can it be that if you hear a name of a certain person, you will feel excitement, you will feel, oh, I miss him, where is he, really so excited? Because you are connected in your souls. Like the verse is saying that all of Am Yisrael are, they have a guarantee, a certain connection between them, that they are obligated to each other because they are connected to each other. So, the truth is that all of the physical world that we're seeing, that we're looking at every day of our life, the Zohar Kadosh is calling it Alma de Shikra. That's the world of lie. That's not the truth. The world of beyond, the world to come, that's Olam Emet. That's the world of truth. Because over there, there are no dividings, there is no constrictions, everything is one. You and I and him and she and it and they and those and that, everything is one. Kudsha Berichu and Am Yisrael and the Torah Kedusha, it's all one. Like that it's written that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world and in the end of the story of Bereshit, it's written Behi Bare'am and the letter He in the word Behi Bare'am is written in a small way, it's a small tiny And that's how He created the wide world. All of the creations and all particles of creation, every single thing came out of His own insight, in, from, from His own breath, from the air that He took out of Himself and created the worlds. So the Chachamim are asking where He took the power to create from from his own inside. So everything that is outside now is actually the Creator's inside. For an example, it's written on the righteous people, Retzon Yere'av Yase, that when the righteous man is praying to Hashem Barach, so then the Creator will follow his will, will listen to his prayer, will accept it and will answer it like that that righteous man asked, that's what Hashem will do. He will do it for him as he asked, like that it's written, that Hashem said to Moshe, Salachti Kidvarecha. 
I forgive them like you asked me to. Exactly how that you ask, that's how I forgive them. Because you asked me to, and because that I was important to you, now you're important to me, and I will follow you. And the Creator gives the permission to the righteous man to lead him, to lead the Creator. Like that it's written, Tzadik Moshe Lir'at Elohim, that the righteous man, he's got the control to tell Hashem what to do. And the Creator, he follows Moshe, he's following the righteous one. When that righteous man is standing and praying, so it's written that the faith is surrounding the person. When the person, like we probably all of us heard on the story of um, Chonia Magel, he made a circle. Choni, he was a righteous man. He wanted to bring down the rain. So what he did, he drew a circle in the ground, went into that circle, put himself in the center, and said to Hashem Barach, I'm not going outside from that circle until you bring down the rain. That's what he did. And Hashem listened to him, and Hashem brought the rain. So Choni Amagel, he realized that you need to put yourself inside of that circle. Which circle? The circle of faith. Like that it's written, And then the verse is saying, In the wedding day, the Ashkenazim, they have that minhag, that the bride, she is circling the groom, seven circles. Why? To show us that she is now coming and joining with him together and creating a certain guarding, shmira, protecting him by establishing those circles around him, that wall that will protect them as a couple for good. And the verse is saying, Nekevat esovev gaver, that the female, she is surrounding the man, she is protecting him. And it's written, Ve'emunatcha sevivotecha, the faith is surrounding you. When you have faith, it's surrounding you. What does it mean that the faith is surrounding you? That no matter to which direction you're going to look, you're going to see Hashem. You're going to see Hashem in money. You're going to see Hashem in Shlom Bayit. You're going to see Hashem in health. You're going to see Hashem in every direction that you will look at. You will have Hashem in Barach. You will believe in Him over there. So, when that righteous man is standing and praying, so it's written, Nekevates of Evgaver, the female is surrounding the male. And now, that is the only place that when the man, the person is doing something, the Creator becomes to be in the aspect of a female to him. Usually, we are receiving from the Creator. We're asking, please Hashem, give us. So we are in the aspect of females to the Creator that we're asking to Him to give it to us. But when we are praying, so the Creator becomes to be in the aspect of female surrounding us. And we become to be what? His Pnimiut. We become to be His inside. If something is surrounding the center, so the center become to be the inside of the circle. So if a person, a man or a woman, are standing and praying to Hashem, Hashem Barach now is surrounding them, and you become to be the inner will of the Creator. And Ratzon Yirav Yaseh, and Hashem will follow your will, and gonna answer your prayer. Because you, nullified yourself to him and came into his place and you said to Hashem, I'm ready, I'm with you, whatever you want me to do, I'm just praying that you're going to answer if you want, may it be your will, and you're just nullifying yourself as much as you can to him and then you ask your request, please Hashem Barach, build Beit HaMikdash, please Bura Olam, reveal Mashiach, please heal all of the sick, bring Parnassah for everyone. You just ask those simple requests, just you're doing it in the right place, in the right time, in purity, 
the Creator will follow your request and will answer your prayer. And that's what it means that everyone is following and finding his own heart. Because if now I will tell you, look, I'm looking for a house. I need to rent a place. I need to have a place for my family. So okay, you're going to care about me. You will maybe pray one second, two seconds for me because really you care. So two seconds of your life, you wouldn't pray for no one else except for me. So great, so two minutes is do it. And you're praying, please Hashem, help him, help Dror, drop Dror, help him, give him a house, what that he needs. Great, wonderful, amazing. So great. But the truth is, we all know it, that if you're going to find yourself, Chas Shalom, in a situation that you really need help, so for yourself it will be easier for you to feel your own sorrow. If you will be out of the house, if you will have to travel with your 22 suitcases with your wife and five children, your prayers would look a little bit different. You would pray more from the heart. Even though that you gave me two minutes and I appreciate that, it's amazing, two minutes. For yourself you would pray a little bit more. So, that's the will of Hashem. There is nothing bad with that. That's really how Hashem made us. If now I've been shalom, injured. Okay, you will feel sorrow for me, but it's very hard that you're really going to feel the same pain like if shalom, it would have happened to you. Shalom. Because you feel yourself. Adam Karov et Selatzmo. You're closer to yourself. You are, you are, all of the nerves and all your, the feelings are, are, are inside of you. That's how Hashem made us. It's okay that it's like that. So now, if you really want to pray for something, and you want your prayers to come from the heart and really in the end to be answered, they must be your real prayers. It must be prayers that you will pray from your own heart on the things that are really bothering you, that really hurt you. Because you cannot pray real prayer that will come out from your heart if it's not stabbing your own heart. If you don't feel the pain, you cannot pray for that thing, a prayer that will tear the sky from, from, from to parts, that will penetrate, that will go straight to heaven, that will shake the skies, that will bring the angels to come and help you, even before that Hashem will command them, will wake up such mercy and kindness and, and love. Only a prayer that comes from a broken heart, so you need really to feel that sorrow. And that's what Hashem Barach is doing with every individual. He is taking us and breaking us to pieces. That's exactly what that he's doing. One went through hell with his divorce, and one went through hell with his economic, with the money. One went through hell with his children, one with the house, one with his health, one with the fact that he needs drugs to be sane. Everyone with his issue. One with his lack of confidence, horrible self-esteem, hates himself, punishing himself, slaughtering himself alive. Everyone with his sorrow, Hashem Barach brought every single one of us to that point that we will have the ability to scream, to call him. And his will is that we're gonna do it from the heart. And now you say, no. So now I'm going to be selfish, I'm going to pray for myself. That's the will of Hashem, that you will be answered. You cannot really pray for me until you reach the level of Moshe Rabbeinu, that he doesn't care about himself and he just wants to pray for us and he cares about us and he thinks only about, okay, as long as you're not Moshe Rabbeinu, you cannot not feel your own sorrow and you cannot not pray for yourself. And it's also not the will of Hashem that everyone will be Moshe Rabbeinu. Hashem wants only one Moshe Rabbeinu in every generation. It's enough to have one. We don't need few Moshe Rabbeinu. You need to have one Moshe Rabbeinu and you need you and you and you and on and on and on. And Hashem Barach, He's got His plan. And the beautiful thing is that only when all of us together are going to wake up, we're going to bring like that the complete redemption to the world. Why? Because like we explained before, even if I will pray from the bottom of my heart on everything that I know that is important, for sure I'm going to forget one of your neighbors in my prayers. Why? Because I, I, I don't know him. I never met him. I 
almost don't care about him because I never had no relation. No, generally I will pray, but like, if they have issues of Shalom Bayit and she's screaming at him and he's screaming at her and he slept two days out of the house and she went now to her mother, I'm not aware to that. I don't know that. So I can't feel it even to pray a little bit about them. For sure that if they will pray on themselves, it will be the greatest thing ever. But even if you as their neighbor will pray, it will be stronger than my prayers because you saw how she left the house, so it touched you somehow. And you saw how he screamed at her and how she screamed at him and how their children were fighting. So you're a little bit closer, so you feel the pain a little bit more. So your prayers are required and very important here in this issue, in that situation. And this is why me alone, even if I'm standing every day and screaming, I cannot bring a complete redemption because the Awakeness is required from four wings of the universe, that everyone will wake up. So when you throw a stone to the water, so it hits waves, it creates waves in circles. And one circle creates the second, and the second creates the third, and the third makes the fourth, and that's how it spreads. So I can only do as much as I can in my place to make a lot, a lot of noise. Hopefully with that dream with that hope that the noise that I can make will wake up the first circle and the first circle will wake up the second and the second will wake up the third. That's the only way for the complete redemption to come. There is no way in the world that there will be only one individual that will fix it all. All of that dream that Mashiach will come and will heal all of the sick, that's closer to an illusion than to reality. It will come in the end of the process. The one that will be left behind in the end, he will come and gather them all and will take them all. But as for now, look how many years Hashem Barach is holding the redemption, the salvation back from us. And why? Because if the redemption would have happened 200 years ago, none of us would have a chance to be part of that redemption. Because in the lifetime of 200 years ago, we haven't completed our tikkun, we haven't fixed ourselves yet completely. The evidence for that is that we're here again. If you're here, it means you have something else to fix, something that you haven't fixed before. So if Mashiach would have come to 200 years ago, we wouldn't be able to enjoy the redemption, and we would have been rejected. But now, that Hashem Barak waited another 200 years and another 2,000 years, and He is keep on waiting and waiting, and don't worry, He will keep on waiting. Mashiach is not about to come, and we have a lot of time, and I hope that no Chabadnikim will shoot me in the head. But it's reality that Mashiach is suffering for so many years already. And that Mashiach, He cares so much about us that He is ready to sacrifice even more for us. And if there is any chance that He will suffer a little bit more or much, much more, and by His suffering of Him staying still and holding Himself and accepting on Himself all of the sorrow of His pain, of His sickness, of His exile, of His darkness, of His sorrow, you will wake up and do tshuva or your neighbor or the friend of your neighbor, He will wait. He will wait until the last one will wake up because He knows the real will of the Creator and He cares about the will of the Creator. And He doesn't care about His own sorrow. That's why He can say, I'm with you guys. I don't care. So He can be Mashiach. Great. So He can be the King of the world. Great. But He doesn't care about that. He is humble. He is humble. Moshe Rabbeinu was already out of Egypt. Think about that. A person went already out of prison and now he's going back to prison to redeem his brothers and sisters. What are you doing? Who is doing that? Only crazy people like Moshe Rabbeinu. That he's so crazy that he couldn't care less about himself and he's throwing himself to the sea for all of us. He's throwing himself back to Egypt and he's the first one that can be killed over there. 
everyone are looking for him, everyone knows his story that he killed an Egyptian officer over there and who knows what's gonna happen, he ran away, he's escaped from the law, he betrayed the kingship, he was, uh, he grew up in the, in the palace of Pharaoh and he, he took decisions on his own and he's running away and now we hear that he's Jewish so for sure he, he must go. And so what are you doing Moshe Rabbeinu? Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't care about himself at all. And we just need to understand that. That Mashiach will wait for every single one of us until we will wake up completely. Completely. So there's no rush. Work on yourself and build yourself one step after the other until you will become perfect. With perfect faith. With happiness. With satisfaction. With joy. With a smile on your face. And how can you achieve that? Let's say that you will be a Talmid Chacham, great? I'll put you for 12 hours every day in the Beit Midrash. Will you be happy in the end of the day? Tell me, 12 hours from this day and on, 12 hours every day. Will you be happy? Say the truth. 12 hours every day in the Beit Midrash. 12 hours, you will be happy? Say the truth. Not sure. He's not sure. Great. 12 hours every day in Beit Midrash. Will you be happy? I want to be happy. You want to be happy, but... <laughs> by your life experience that you know yourself after 12 hours in Beit Midrash but every day every day probably not at first not at first <laughs> at least we're sitting with honest people and now I'm asking you do you think I'm, now why I'm not asking you that because on that question for sure you're all gonna lie but I'm gonna ask you like theoretically have you seen people that received huge amounts of money and that money destroyed them and didn't build them? Did you see something like that ever in your life? I saw. People that money damaged their life, they inherit a huge amount of money, they won the lottery, they received some huge amount of money. I'm not going to ask you, I'm going to say, yes, I will be happy, I will be happy. <laughs> but the truth is that there is no guarantee that money will make you happy. Because Adam wa nefesh, vedamim, it's money. Money contains spirits inside of it. So when you receive money, you receive spirits with it. And if the money that is coming holds spirits, means souls, particles of nefesh, of souls that are not in your level, that you won't be able to deal with. They can be nervous, they can be sad, they can have desires, they can be made out of fire, they can speed up, they can do many, many things. It depends in those particles of spirit that will come with the money. And you don't know what you're going to receive in that huge suitcases that you dream on. It can contain something spiritually, spiritual cargo that you won't have the ability to deal with. And Hashem Itbarach, He knows that. And this is why He is holding back those redemptions, those salvations that we are so desired to receive. Because He knows what is better for us. That it's better for you to build more vessels, to receive more tools, that when one day you will open that suitcase, you will have the ability to deal with that. And with those hours in the Beit Midrash, and with that house, and with that fancy car, and with that wife, and with those children, and whatever, with Aliyah. I met a woman that cried to me, I failed three times in Aliyah. She made Aliyah three times with her family, and I wouldn't call it fail. But she called it failed. With tearing eyes, failed Aliyah three times. That's not a failure. You did something huge. You tried to achieve something huge three times. And you must only appreciate yourself on what that you did and on what that you achieved spiritually. That you overpowered on your fears, that you dedicated your life to do something big, that you cared about Hashem, that you thought about your nation, that you cared about Am Israel, that you thought about the, um, the future of your children, that you're a caring person, that you have a heart, and you did something great. Now the results are all in the hands of Hashem. How can a person blame himself on something that happened to him in life? And even if you chose something and you feel, oh, it was a mistake, I chose wrong, 
that's lack of faith. Because you must understand that everything that you do is in the hands of heaven. And Hashem is guiding you and giving you the power and giving you the advice and waking up the desire and the fears and everything inside of you. And He is slowly, slowly aiming you to the right path, to the right way. And to that point we came from that explanation that I said. Every single one of us must be redeemed in His own way and only that redemption will be complete when every single one of us will find the treasures that are fit to His needs, to the roots of His own soul. Because for one person to be so rich, it can only kill him. Because he's not built for that. And for another one to sit in the Beit Midrash and to learn Torah all day long, it's not part of his future for sure. It can only confuse him and depress him and put so much stress on his shoulders, something that he won't be able to deal with. So who can tell you and guide you what's your real path, what really you need to do? No one, except of you. Only when you're going to really start listening to your own soul, then you will start hearing your ear in a voice, the voice of heaven that is speaking from your inside. Because when there is a rabbi or a teacher or a mentor or whoever that speaks, he speaks from his inside. And you need to be inspired from his words to do what? To listen to your inside. To come back to yourself. When he is explaining his path of tshuva, how that he is coming back to Hashem, you should be very happy and glad for him that he's so successful. But it doesn't mean that if you're going to follow his footsteps, you're going to achieve the same things because your wife, she's different than his, and your family are different than his, and your financials are different than his, and your house is in a different neighborhood, different community, your health is different, your body, your desires, the hours of sleep that you required, and on and everything. 99.9% .9 of you is different. So what's the connection? To learn from him that if he did something good, it can inspire you to do something good as well. So he is an amazing doctor. So you will be an amazing lawyer. And he will be an amazing Talmud Chacham. And he will be an amazing businessman. And she will design houses and gonna move furniture all day long because that's her point. Because that's what will make her happy. And she's got that talent while moving the things and thinking and planning and designing and, and illustrating and, and that's how she makes her living and people likes her work and it's amazing and that's what Hashem wants from her or else He wouldn't give her that talent. Why to Hashem Ibach to give someone the talent to play or to dance or to sing if He doesn't want him to use those talents? If He gave you the ability to dance, trust me, we need you to dance. It will be part of the redemption. We need dancers. You think that to Beit HaMikdash you don't come with Betupim or Bimcholot, with drums and dancing. That's how you come. Ki besimchat etzeu veshalom tuvalun. You need to come with joy and with peace, with harmony, with love, with friendship, supporting each other, loving each other, letting everyone express his real self, his true self. You have people that are geniuses and you have people that their mind is barely working. They cannot think right. We also need them. Do you know who are they? Do you know what they're able to achieve? Which salvations and redemptions they are bringing under cover, behind your back, things that you don't know. You now enjoy that amazing fruit. Oh, it's so tasty, it's so sweet. Do you know by the merit of which person those fruits are so fresh and tasty? You don't know. You can never tell. The Creator put all of the creation under our hands. We are creating with Him the creation every moment of our life. When you have good thoughts, you're creating good things. When you have negative thoughts, you're creating negative things. We must pull ourselves all of the time to the good. To do good, to think good, to hope for good, to be good. In every moment that you will reveal godliness, the kindness, the loving kindness of the Creator, you will pull down the light of mercy that will wash and purify all the creation. 
So if there is just a simple person that doesn't have a clue about God, he is just that smiling person that always says hello to everyone and helps all of the old people to carry their bags and he's just a friendly person. And when someone needs charity, he's the first one to look and to find coins and to give every... and you don't know what he's doing. The verse is saying, Tzedakat atzil mimavet, charity will save from death, right? Okay, now if I take a, take a penny and I'll give it to the charity box for Tzedakah, will it be counted as Tzedakah? In heaven, will they say, Dror Moshe ben Emanuela gave charity, now I gave it? What they will say in heaven? They can say also he was cheap, great, <laughs> but also they will have to say, they will have to admit that it was charity, I just gave it its charity. Small one, but charity. So, on charity, what is written? That it will save from death. Tzedakah tatzil mimavet. Great! So maybe it won't save the life of the chief rabbi, the biggest righteous man of the generation. But if it will save the life of a squirrel to be run by a truck, so is it worthy? If it will save the life of a butterfly that will not going to be squished in a, in a, in a, on, a on a car uh, windshield, is it worthy? One butterfly, a, 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 an orange one in Miami. Okay, it's worthy. Yes, it's worthy. Why is it worthy? Because there is life over there, and that penny is worth so much, and you're not aware to that. You don't understand what Hashem is doing with you. When you keep Shabbat, whoa, that's huge. When you say shakol on drinks, when you wash your hands in the morning, when you do whatever you do, you can never tell how much it counts in the eyes of heaven. And that's real faith. To understand that everything is important and precious in the eyes of Hashem, even your hobbies, even your talents, even the gifts that He gave you. Even your desire for certain things. If God decided to pleasure you through music, so how can you think in the world that maybe there is something wrong with that? There is no pleasure in this world unless the Creator decided to pleasure you, to satisfy you. Ki He's sending His messengers, His holy angels to satisfy you. There is one person that will smell that flower and he will enjoy, he will receive a huge satisfaction from that smell. Another person can't smell. Why? Not because he's not able to smell, because Hashem forbidden those angels to satisfy that person through his nose. He defected in a way in his nose, in the spiritual organ that affects the nose, and now he's not able to enjoy his nose anymore. Because you have 613 organs in the body of the person that are equal to 613 obligation of the Torah. And when a person is not keeping parts of the Torah, so by doing that, he's covering, he's bringing darkness on his organs, not on any one of us. And then the light of the Creator cannot shine through those husks that He created by His sins or by his distance from keeping Torah mitzvot properly, and the light cannot shine upon him completely, so then he can't smell, he can't see, he can't taste, he can't feel, he can't digest, he can't walk, he needs to sit, whatever. Only because that he defected in a way. And now Hashem, so to speak, is punishing him means trying to wake him up to understand that something is wrong with you, that you're doing something wrong. Moshe Rabbeinu, after 120 years of his life, he came back to heaven, complete in his body, complete in his mind, his eyes were healthy, his lungs were healthy, everything. Everything was perfect. Why? Because he never defected the Torah mitzvot. He kept it all. To keep it all, it doesn't mean to wake up at 4 a.m. and to run to the mikveh, and then to dive in shachrit, in a minyan, and to put fill in rashi, and rabbi nutab, and then to learn two halachot, and then to complete the fayomi. No, 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 no. That can be a life story of him, maybe. Maybe he got the power to do that. We, regular, simple people, we don't have that power. So, 
we have a different life story. Okay, I see that when I wake up at 4 a.m., I have a crazy headache. I'm not able to function. But when I'm waking up at 8, at 9, I'm good. Okay, so I understand that I need to wake up at 8, at 9. It cannot be that if there is something that is damaging me, that it's good for me. Cannot be. But hey, I heard an amazing lecture. A huge rabbi, and he was talking about davening nets in the minyan. Great, I hear you. I want to achieve that. But when I try to do that, the migrants are attacking me over and over and I'm not able to function. So what should I do? You know what? I'm going to work on that. I'm going to pray for that. I'm going to try. I'm going to ask Hashem, Hashem, what to do. If I will wake up today at 4 and at 7 I already need to take my children to school and then at night I need to be in my job and like, I won't make it. I'm not able to function like that. I'm not an angel. I have that body. I'm limited. I'm still in that physical prison with my limitations. Thank you. Have you seen the Santa's little helpers? Thank you. Every one of us must understand that who that you are is who that Hashem made you to be. And it's not okay. It's perfect. It's a handmade creation of the Creator. The one that is beyond this world, the one that is endless, the source of love, the source of kindness. He made you to be exactly who that you are with that crazy pain in the back. Forgetting everything that is important, losing so much money, forgetting the, the birthday of your wife, every time, every year, the anniversary. Yes, that's how He made you. Why? To wake you up to desire Him. To wake you up to think about Him. Because if everything would be perfect to you, you would forget about Him completely. Doesn't care. If now you have money, will you going to go and pray for money? No. So how are you going to remember that He brings the money? Only when you don't have money, and then you scream, and then you see salvation. Oh, thank you Hashem, from the bottom of my heart. Why? Because you were broke five minutes ago. So he built your faith by breaking you to pieces. And we must understand the favor that he's doing with us. We live here like we live forever. Oh, I'm here, I must take the care of this, I must... It's a temporary world. It's Alma de Shika, it's a world of lie. In this world that calls world of lie, we're just like visitors. We're just guests here. Guests just to hang out, to spend some time in this prison of desires and lusts and to try to complete ourselves as much as we can. To try to be nice to each other, friendly to each other, never ever to lie, never ever to lie. And people are lying to themselves, telling themselves that they're not lying. That's the, the whole, most horrible problem. Making up stories to themselves like they're so good and so righteous and everything is perfect and now oh, I'm doing my best. I'm doing... And he's so used to those mantras, to just saying those words over and over that he thinks that he's really okay. But life is rebuking you. Life is breaking you to pieces. Life breaks me to pieces. That I will do what with that? Except of tshuva. Except of coming back to Hashem and asking Him, why should I suffer? And why am I going through those kind of pains? And why my children I keep on fighting? And why I couldn't find that house? I'm talking about myself. Why am I going through that um, sorrow? Why I need to suffer so much? Why? And when you ask from your heart, Hashem accept that prayer, that prayer and He will answer. Because Hashem is close to everyone that will call Him with truth. So when you have a real pain, and you use that pain to come closer to Hashem, that is a real prayer that will be answered. The only trick is really to pray. To use those downs to make a huge high, huge, huge hill, to climb high by those fallings, by those failures. If we would understand the secret of creation, and I will repeat something that I said in the last few classes again because it's very important to you that you haven't heard it and to the ones that heard it, it's very important. When the Creator created the world, the world before was endless. It was only a simple light of the Creator, of infinity, of eternity. It was all one 
united light. That's what it was here before. There was nothing there. And then the Creator Himself, that light, came to that thought that He wants to reveal His mercy, His love on someone. He wanted to give from his good to someone, there was, but there was no one there. There was no one to give it to. So he had to create the world. That it means that he had to remove himself to the side. And so to speak, to create a place that will be empty from that light, from that kindness, from infinity. And into that empty space, he sent a beam of light to the center of that circle. And from that point, he created the worlds. And the worlds, like we explained before, are the physical coverings of the spirituality that it is Hashem Himself. And He now keeps on sending that light, invisible light, through the point of center into our bodies, from our inside, outside. And you're alive from inside. And your source of life is inside. And your source of life, it's your soul. And your soul is chalek eloka mimal, it's particle of heaven, it's part of the Creator Himself. It's that beam of light, the same light that is coming from Him. It's Him into you, that you not exist at all. You are just expressing His being. He is just passing His light through us. We are those vessels that through those vessels the endless light of the Creator is being revealed in the world. So He chose to reveal His light through you means that you can write songs and you like music and you like art and that's great. That is not you. That's the light of the Creator that is coming through you. So if you're going to decide to deny, to fight, to depress it, to hide it, you're blocking the light of Hashem. Hashem gave you that talent to be a steps dancer, to work on, 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 on designing cities. That's what you need to do because He gave that vision, that talent to you, His wisdom. His greatness, His power. He chose you to reveal a certain light and it's not hard to find. The only hard part here in all of this concept is to believe that who that you are is that very important person that Hashem made. To know who you are, it's not hard. To know if you like chocolate bars or if you like cereals in the morning, you know. If you like to hear classic music or trance, you know. If you like to eat small meals or heavy meals, if you like cheese or you like meat, you know. If you like those kind of people, that kind of, you like that group, you like that section, if you like to learn, you like to run, to jog, to, 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 to meditate, you know who you are. That's not a problem to know who you are. Just to believe that it's important, that's the mission. To believe that God made you and you are a divine creation. You are the way that the Creator chose to reveal Himself to the world. That's the mission. That's the purpose. That you will find your true self and go with that all the way. And not always going to think about your needs. And not always going to think about what you feel and what you want and what you need and what you have to. Ask Hashem, what do you want from me? And then Hashem will help you. Because the one that counts on Hashem, kindness will surround him. I was standing in that test once, many, many times. I will tell you about one of those times that I was standing in that test. I was standing in a situation that my wife felt very sick. She was not able to work, she have had a lot of pains and she was pregnant and she couldn't work, she had to stay in the house and it was already very, um, uh, uh, was also very hard for her to, to, to take care of the children and we didn't know what to do because from one side I had to go and to bring Panasa money for our family, for the house to go and work and from the other side I had to take care of my wife and to help her. 
we didn't feel like we can count on family and stuff like that that other people can count on and we were only on our own and I didn't know what to do I didn't have the right advice so I came to Hashem in one of my prayers and I told him listen you put two things in my life the need to bring money to support my family and the need to help my wife that she will be okay that she will manage with the children and you know that she's already going through enough with her sorrow with her pain so I don't know how to deal with those two things I don't know how to cover for both so look I'll make a deal with you that's what I said to Hashem I'll choose the one that I think that is more important to you and I will take care of it and you will take care of the other it was the only choice I had and I told him I'm gonna stay with my wife and I'll help her and I stopped working and I stayed every day from the morning till the night in the house with her helping her taking care of the children and I promise to you that I didn't lack of one penny to cover my bills and all of my expenses and I had so many miracles like those and people are asking me, where did you do that in Bodhidut? Where was that tree that you were shaking to bring that bounty from? It's every tree. It's every field. It's every porch. It's every lawn. It's every backyard. It's in your living room. Because it's in your mouth and in your heart to keep and to do. And if you will be honest and you will come to Hashem and you will tell Him, I don't know how to wake up early in the mornings. I don't know also how to find the Shidduch and also how to find my parnasa. I don't know how also to support my family and also to have time to spend with my children and to teach them Torah. I don't know how to also to do tshuva and also to... I don't know. Help me. If you will say that from a point of truth of your heart, you will be answered. Because real honest prayers are the prayers that are being answered. The only problem is that we're not breaking that barrier and going and praying. We're stucking ourselves with that sorrow. Oh, I don't have a solution. Oh, I don't know what to do with that sadness, with that depression, and drowning and drowning in our own sorrow. Instead of taking ourselves seriously and going back to Hashem and talking to Him, talking to Him. He's so close, you can't believe it. He's so much with you. You can't imagine how close he is. You and him are one. When you talk, he is talking through your mouth. When you're opening your mouth, Hashem gave you those words. When you find yourself praying to Hashem, it reveals the will of the Creator that you will be answered already. Before you're going to call, he's going to answer. And only a person that will take himself seriously to go and to talk to the Creator will see those miracles. Those are miracles that you can experience only based on your life experience, on your sweat, on your blood, on your tears, on your effort, on your time. No one can supply those salvations to you because even if He will bring it to you, you won't have the vessels to contain it. And those hours of Gemara will go down the drain. And that suitcase is full of money can destroy your life and not to make you happy and not to build you. Because we need to have vessels to enjoy bounty. And especially spiritual bounty that requires purity and holiness and pure intentions. So for that we must understand the real will, the divine will, the will of heaven, the will of the Creator, that He created the world because that He already, before we now have those desires and that will, before of that He wanted to influence, He wanted to reveal His mercy. Mercy means to give to someone that is not worthy. That's His will. You're not supposed to be worthy. You're just supposed to understand that it all depends on Him and to go and ask. And to go and to connect yourself to Him. And to become one with Him. A connection that based on love, on appreciation, on friendship. And if you don't get something, go and talk to Him about it. Go and ask Him. 
So why in the world you did this and why in the world you did that? And to ask those questions, it's the only way to come closer to Him. Because you look for that answer and before you will be answered, you won't be happy. So you must ask your questions as hard as they are. Don't worry, Hashem can answer and Hashem will answer. And you need, you need to be ready to receive the answer. You need to build those vessels to be answered. And when you will be answered and you will accept the answer, that will be your tshuva shlema. You will have the complete answer. You will become a Baal Tshuva. You will own the answer. And then you will know how to answer every person on his needs. And you will have the solution and the key for every situation based on your life experience that you experience so much. And you learn to know and to recognize Hashem so much that you can hand that key and to share it with others. Thank you very much. Azakul. This world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all His, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.